Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, today I'm going to talk for the next 20 minutes or so about developing Salesforce DX apps on GitHub. My name is Ravi Gadia. I'm an enterprise solutions engineer at GitHub. And uh, if after my talk you have questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or email, or please visit our booth, which is in that direction, uh, booth 13. Uh, we have great stickers, great hubbers. Come, please uh, come speak with us. So the agenda today, I'm going to cover three things. And because our time is short, you're, you're really going to get just a taste of these things uh, with some idea of you know, what to do further. Uh, the first topic will be Git and demystifying Git. Uh, thereafter, we'll, we'll show you how to collaborate on GitHub. And finally, I'll close with a demo of uh, Salesforce DX on GitHub. Uh, we're going to do a, a secure um, workflow with SFDX. So uh, I'm starting with Git. And the person you see there is Linus Torvalds. Um, he is famous, obviously, for uh, inventing Linux. Um, Linux started as a couple hundred lines of code in 1991 and evolved to um, now close to 20 million lines of code in 2000, uh, 2017. And uh, in the early days, the Linux community used uh, Unix uh, commands such as tar, diff, and patch to manage their source code. Uh, that proved unwieldy after some time, and they adopted BitKeeper, which was a distributed source code management system. Uh, they lost the rights to use BitKeeper around 2005, and as the story goes, Linus invented Git uh, over uh, a weekend. So Git basically solves the problem of distributed source code management, and it can apply to anything that's text-based, whether it's code, documents, uh, or even data sets. So before Git, source code control systems were, were centralized. Uh, so you had basically a hub-and-spokes model where you couldn't really push between the edges. Everything had to go through this central server. And if you weren't online, it meant that you were out of luck because you couldn't commit your code. And since most operations required a network round trip, if, you were, uh, if your network was congested or had high latency, you might have poor performance. Now, Git is a distributed uh, version control system. I'm using the term version control system, source code management system interchangeably. Uh, for Git, it's distributed. And what that means is that every clone is a, is a complete repository that includes uh, all of the history and all the code from the other clones. And, and so typically, you have um, uh, in this uh, sort of network of clones, you might identify one of those clones to be the master or the server, if you will. And so that's shown here by the, by the, uh, the big box, whereas the laptops are the, the edges, the nodes. And, and basically, you can push, and push, push to, pull from um, any of the, of, of the nodes. Uh, including between the edges. Uh, you generally would work offline, and when you have something that you're satisfied with, you could sync um, when you're back online. And we also have very lightweight branching in Git. So it means if you have a, a master branch and you want to create uh, uh, another branch, it's, it's very uh, a lightweight operation. It's not very compute intensive. You're not making a copy of your whole repository. Uh, and again, because we have this network there, there is no single point of failure. Local operations, super fast. So let's go over some basic concepts in Git. And, and this might be um, familiar to, to you, but it, in, in case it isn't, um, commits are basically snapshots in the context of a branch. And branches are, are collections of commits arranged on a timeline. So it, let's just go through what this looks like. Let's say you have a, a master branch. You write some code. You make a commit. Okay. You write some more code, you make a commit, change that file again, make a commit. So your, your branch is master, and it, is, it comprises three commits. Okay, so the master gives the context to those, uh, to those commits. Let's look at feature branches now. Um, if you're a lone developer, you might be fine committing just to master. But most of us aren't lone developers. We work in teams. And the industry standard these days is to do work um, on branches either uh, according to features or maybe even just for specific individuals. So uh, using a commit as the starting point, we can, we can basically create a branch. 
And what the branch is, it's, it's basically a new timeline, a new context. And if I'm, if I'm working off of the, the feature branch here called feature A, it will mean that all of my subsequent commits uh, are associated with that branch. And so post branch, um, we could have commits on both the, the master or the base branch, as well as the feature branch. And they are independent from each other. And if at some point in the future, I'm happy with my, my feature uh, commits, and I want to merge this back into master, I can do that as an explicit operation on Git. And post merge, my, my master is now the union of the feature branch and the master branch. Okay. So merge is, is basically joining the two development histories and all the code therein. OK, so let's go to a bit of an advanced uh, example, uh, something called git flow. So uh, this diagram that you see was taken from a, a post, uh, blog post done by Vincent Dreisen, where he uh, very convincingly uh, explains how you can use the basic building blocks of branch, commit, and merge to build sophisticated workflows using just vanilla Git. Okay, so in here he has a master branch, feature branches, as well as branches for development, release, and hotfixes. Okay, so um, there's a link here that you could probably follow up on if you can take a picture of that screen. It's a great article. Now, moving on from Git, uh, Git, as Vincent demonstrated, was really revolutionary for source control, but collaboration was painful. Right? Often developers were working uh, on the command line. They were uh, editing documents with text editors locally, having to push them with uh, the CLI. And if they wanted to have discussions about their work, they generally did this over email lists. Okay? So collaboration was kind of an afterthought, not part of Linus's invention. And, and this is where the founders of Git come along. Uh, of, sorry, of GitHub come along. Uh, GitHub is a social coding platform built on top of Git. And uh, as the story goes, the, the founders of GitHub were uh, developers in San Francisco working on a side project. They decided to use Git to manage their code. Um, but then they found that it wasn't really easy to collaborate with each other. So being Web 2.0 developers, they slapped a GUI on top of it, and they started adding collaboration features to it. Uh, today, GitHub has uh, about 24 million users, uh, 70 million repositories. Uh, th the numbers are really astounding. Uh, and it is the largest collection of open source software in the world, the largest community of developers in the world. Um, we have something like uh, over 300 unique programming languages um, present on the platform. Uh, this year alone, we've had 1.5 billion commits of code. And, and since uh, 2007, when GitHub started, 100 million pull requests. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about pull requests. But um, what they do is they, the pull requests, in, in, in my opinion, they, they um, are an instance of, of collaboration taking place. And, and you'll see that as we go further in this, uh, this talk. Right, so GitHub is not just a place to store code. There's a, a formal collaboration model where we enable conversations about code alongside the code. We integrate with DevOps tools, CI, CD, testing. Um, we have uh, uh, other features uh, that are geared towards project management, documentation, communication. Uh, and, and we're fully committed to open source and the enterprise as well. So something like 52% of the Fortune 50 uses GitHub Enterprise, our on-premise offering for their software development practices. Uh, we're having a special promotion for Salesforce DX users where you, you can get uh, six months of GitHub business. So this is our enterprise offering on github.com for five users, and, and that's on us. So go to developer.salesforce.com slash GitHub to activate that. Uh, and, and you can also visit our booth over in that direction where we have more info and flyers so that you don't forget to take advantage of this, this great offer. Okay, so I talked about pull requests earlier. What pull requests are, um, it's basically uh, if, you, if you're working on your own branch and you decide that you want to merge back into, say, a master branch, you can raise a pull request to alert your teammates and collaborators that you want to have a discussion about the code and have some code review, maybe make more modifications with their input, 
uh, and then do a merge, right? So the pull request is basically um, a signal to everyone else that, that you think you have something ready to merge, but you want feedback. And this leads us to something we call GitHub Flow, which is a vastly simplified version of the Git flow you saw earlier. And uh, this is really one of our contributions to uh, the space and, and, and our collaboration model. So in the beginning, you create a feature branch that's shown by the symbol in gray. Uh, you add some commits, shown there as those dots. And at some point, when you feel like your commits uh, are representative enough to start having a conversation about what you're trying to do, you would open a pull request. And the pull request is going to alert your team that you want to have a discussion and get their feedback. And so you have that discussion within the pull request itself. You may make more commits. Other teammates may make related commits. And then once everybody believes that, hey, this has really uh, reached a point where we're ready to merge, you make that call and you merge. Okay? So this is what we call GitHub Flow. We actually use this in running uh, github.com. Okay? So uh, this is used in practice at massive scale. We have a version of the GitHub flow that is designed to help uh, enforce uh, better hygiene and adoption of DevOps practices. So it's basically a secure workflow. And in this secure workflow, you would uh, protect your master branch, which basically means that you would uh, designate who can commit to it, who can make changes to it, um, and that you can't just make changes to it without uh, going through a pull request uh, process. Um, you, would, uh, you could optionally uh, require that every commit uh, triggers a CI job or some kind of testing job that's going to test against uh, any automated tests you have. Um, and, and when you open your pull request, you can require code reviews. Right? So once these code reviews have happened, once CI is passing, uh, once all of the checks that you have mandated must take place take place, uh, you, can then, uh, you can then merge. Okay? So this is a, a secure workflow, and this is actually what I'm going to show you uh, subsequently here. All right, so I've got two demos. I've pre-recorded them in the interest of time. And uh, the first demo is, is basically based off of the uh, module continuous integration using Salesforce DX on the trailhead, uh, as, as Salesforce DX getting started. Okay? And in this, uh, in this module, you basically use GitHub and Travis CI uh, and uh, basically, Travis CI is going to act as a connected app and, and do some uh, headless uh, testing and, and pushing into, a, um, into one of your uh, scratch uh, orgs that you're setting up with Salesforce DX. Okay, so uh, in that module, they, they point you to a repo on GitHub that has all the instructions. And, and what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to show you that you can use the local commands of Git. Hopefully, you guys can see this. I just edited the readme file. I'm going to commit it locally with the message that I removed uh, a greeting. Uh, I'm pushing this now to the, the remote, the master, which is, uh, which is GitHub. Uh, that's getting pushed over the network. I go back to my repo, and I see, indeed, that the, the, the greeting has been removed. I can click on the commit, and I can see the change. Uh, and then I hop over to Travis CI, and I see that a build is tank taking place that's testing that commit. Okay, all of that it just works, right? So the the trailhead, the modules, they're awesome. They they all just work. Um, so I just wanted to show you that as kind of the starting point. That's the the context in which we're working. And in the next one here, secure development with GitHub Flow, uh, we're going to modify the uh, configuration of our repo on github.com and enforce the secure development uh, flow that I showed you earlier. And this moves kind of fast, and I'll, I'll try to talk you through it. So uh, in this case, I've got two browser windows, one as myself, Ravi Gadia, one as my bald colleague, Irvin Guerra. And uh, as Ravi Gadia, since I'm the owner of the repo, I can manipulate the settings. You can see here I have one collaborator. And we're moving over to the Branch tab, where I choose a branch, master, to protect. And when I protect this branch, it means that I can require that pull requests have code reviews, 
Um, I can enforce that status checks pass before, for each commit before the merge, and I can also require that um, that administrators have to adhere to the same uh, the same rules that you can't override. Okay, so I've set that up. I'm now going to make a non-trivial change, um, not just to the readme, but to some important file. In this case, the um, the project.json for Salesforce DX, adding some text that I I found on one of the documentation pages. Okay, so I'm making this change. Uh, I can do this right on github.com. I don't have to do this locally and push it up. Since it's a protected branch, I can't commit to master. The system forces me to create a, a new branch for that. And then will immediately um, give me the option of creating a pull request. So I've created the pull request, indicating that I'm ready now to have a conversation about my change. I'm uh, assigning a reviewer, which is Irvin. And Irvin, on the right, immediately gets a notification saying, hey, you have an unread notification. Check out this pull request. And the system is telling Irvin that he needs to do uh, a review. Uh, so he has a look, not quite sure. And he leaves a, not an approval, but a comment saying, are you sure we need to do this? Is this the right thing to do? Um, he has three options. He can comment, he can approve, and he can request changes. In this case, he just comments. Uh, now I go back and, and I give him my reasoning that, yeah, hey, I think this is the right thing to do. I read about it on a documentation page. It must be the right thing to do. Right, so this information now is going to pass back over to Irvin, and he can then look further into it and, and takes appropriate action. Right, so you see that the, uh, the link has popped up there. And he decides now to add a review. He's going to approve it. Notice he didn't look into it, really. He just kind of approved it, taking my word for it. He's been convinced to, to some degree. OK, so the change has been approved. I see it now reflected back on my page. Now we just have to wait for the CI job to pass, and we're good to go. Oh, but CI has not passed. CI has failed. Looking further, we see that the job that ran on Travis, the job failed. So like, hey, this is a case where the automation, the machinery identified that um, something was not right. So I'm now backing out. I close my pull requests. I delete my branch. And verifying my code, I see that my, my project.json file is exactly as it was before. It's pristine. Right? So this is the value of doing your work in a feature branch, um, that you don't corrupt your, your, your master branch or your base branch. So um, basically, we started with what was just the vanilla module. We've done some very minor changes on github.com, and we've implemented a secure development workflow. And, and that's just a starting point. There's a lot more you could do. You could implement uh, 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 continuous deployment. It, it, there's a whole world of things you can do using GitHub as the, as the base for your, your DevOps tool chains. Um, and with that, uh, I thank you for coming. Um, if you have any questions, please approach me afterwards. I have a colleague, Christina, who's in the corner. And uh, if you would like a follow-up with us, she'll be ready to take your information as well. Thanks so much. Have a great day, everyone.